more good stuff on on becoming a real wizard. This set of talks is on health and wisdom. And of course, this is a very important topic. It is um, a bit complicated in a way, and like a lot else, if one wants to learn wisdom, uh, I'm going to introduce you to books. Um, I'll try to introduce you to books in a way that uh, is orderly. That is, I'll give you simpler things first in a kind of way, albeit uh, um, somewhat uh, practical as well. The whole point of this section is to do down-to-earth things on health. Now, uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that natural science um, thinks that the human being is only matter and not spirit. And the ideas that come out of natural science in this sense affect uh, medicine and psychiatry and psychology. Although there are places where people do recognize that there is spirit involved and uh, one can find all kinds of sort of alternative medicines. Uh, some very ancient, some more modern. I'm not going to go into the details of the new age things that one can do about health, you know, whether it's uh, Ayurvedic, I think, is maybe the one kind of medicine, whether it's uh, uh, certain kinds of diets out of the East. There's no doubt a lot of stuff out of the East that one can get to. In the last lectures, I talked about the difference between traditional wisdom and scientific wisdom uh, because it's important to realize that, that the situation advances. That is what was traditionally wise is not necessarily particularly wise today. Rudolf Steiner put a very interesting word in play uh, when he talked about the possibility of the soul going into its past. What he meant there was that we have, in prior incarnations, participated in these ancient traditions directly. And so there's characteristics of our soul life that, shall we say, remember aspects of these ancient wisdoms, and we will be, on occasion, attracted to uh, them and also have karma in relationship to them that has to be worked out. So we shouldn't just assume that because we've gotten involved in an ancient wisdom, particularly an Eastern ancient wisdom, that we're all screwed up. The point is to be thoughtful and realistic and self-honest. You should trust your own thinking above all else. Whatever Wendt says or Steiner says or anything else, Think about it for yourself, but think reflectively, think carefully. Don't just have thoughts, but ponder thoughts. And uh, Another element of our health is to recognize that um, diseases are part of existence. That is, they serve a purpose in our development. You can read, for example, in the works of anthroposophical medicine, which followed indications given by Steiner, which we'll get into. You'll find the idea there that childhood illnesses have a function. And anthroposophical doctors will tend not to encourage uh, vaccination to eliminate all childhood illnesses. Now, this is contrary to the general teachings of modern medicine and it creates certain kinds of problems. For example, um, people who refuse to get their kids uh, immunized will have a tendency to get certain childhood diseases and these childhood diseases then will appear in the schools where these children go to school. And so, for example, in recent years there's been outbreaks of whooping cough which can actually bring about death. 
So we're not just, you know, playing with things that are inconsequential, but at the same time, the idea in anthroposophical medicine is a very good idea, and it needs to be thought about in terms of whether or not one encourages one's children to be inoculated against childhood diseases. And this idea out of anthroposophical medicine is that the childhood de disease exercises the immune system. That is, the immune system learns something from meeting the disease that it doesn't otherwise learn. And if we suppress childhood diseases through immunization, we transfer into the future of the, that human being potential for diseases because the immune, <coughs> the, immune the immune system is weak. It never got exercised. It never had a chance to learn to marshal forces. And it's just like, you know, uh, what we're aware of with regard to children and obesity and lots of other questions. And I'm going to talk about those. You know, uh, because there's a lot of confusion today, for example, about obesity and childhood obesity, physical exercise and all that. Now, nobody doubts that good things happen from physical exercise. Everybody should also be aware that good things happen from spiritual exercises. And of course, it's a difficult question if one is responsible for children. What do you do? Well, my advice is to trust your own judgment. And of course, people around you will not particularly like choices that you make because they'll have their own judgment. And one of the things that goes on in life as we work with issues of health is that people are going to be afraid. You know, For example, we have in our culture the idea of communicable diseases in the forms of bacteria and germs which have flooded the environment. Now, in anthroposophical medicine, there's another idea about the germ theory of disease. And Rudolf Steiner, in his lectures on medicine to doctors, made a very interesting kind of observation. He says, the kind of thinking that looks at the germ theory of disease would drive through an environment in which you had rolling grasslands and studded throughout rolling grasslands were cows, lots and lots of cows. And you could decide through a certain kind of thinking that the cows are uh, a consequence or a cause, the environment is a consequence of the cows rather than the cows being a consequence of the environment. And that's the question you have to ask with the germ theory of disease. Because as everybody knows through your own experience, when flu season comes, not everybody gets the flu. And a lot of people who don't take flu vaccines don't get the flu either. So the question is, why does, do people not get the flu? And why does not everybody in a family get a cold when the cold comes by? Okay, and because I'm running out of time and this is a subject which requires some more careful thought, I'm going to stop and then come back to you.